How do you deal with interior design client problems? So at any point on a project, typically larger projects, there'll come a time where something goes wrong. And uh, this really is pretty normal. Construction projects or really long or large decorating projects, you know, you're dealing with a lot of different people and um, part of your job is managing all these people and helping the project come to um, fruition uh, professionally and successfully. But things go wrong and they go wrong for experienced designers, they go wrong for new designers. So how do we deal with these? Um, well, that's what we're going to look at today. I'm going to give you a 10-step process so that you can always get the right result um, for you and your client and deal with the situation professionally because there's a lot of emotion involved and um, you know you might be stepping on some toes or someone else might be stepping on your toes and these kinds of problems they they arise pretty much uh, at least once on every project um, it's not the kind of thing that happens once in a designer's life. These things, uh, we're problem solvers. We have to deal with these things regularly, at least once on every project. So what are the kinds of things am I talking about? This is yeah, the client not paying on time, uh, somebody going behind your back, um, architect, manufacturer, con uh, construction worker, um, even the, the builder potentially making deals with the client directly. Um, the client not agreeing to uh, you photographing the project, uh, even if it's in your contract. Another thing could be client changes. And this is a big one. Uh, you've agreed something, something signed off, and then all of a sudden the clients are changing their mind. So how do you deal with these things? So uh, that's what we're going to look at now. Step one is try to catch the problem early. <laughs> and I know we're not uh, clairvoyant and we cannot, can't look into the future, but sometimes there are signs. Um, obviously, an experienced designer will start to see these signs a lot earlier than an inexperienced designer. But um, sometimes it catches us by surprise. Um, but good client communication, good professional communication with all of the team is really key. If you are honest, upfront, and very clear about everything um, that the, about the process and about um, decisions made on a uh, and um, what those uh, the impact of those decisions are and you get everything in writing and clarify things and make sure that you get a response from people then these are kind of steps that I mean you're doing everything right so it's unlikely that you're going to have uh, issues that where someone says, oh, I didn't know what was going on or I didn't realise. So at least you're avoiding some some parts um, of uh, the kind of issues that can arise, uh, more typical issues. So yes, we're not clairvoyant. We, we may not be able to see all of the problems, but there are some signals and they really do come down to you always communicating professionally um, and uh, as clearly as possible. Obviously, vetting clients is... Something that uh, can help, well, uh, well, eighty percent of the time can help, um, because things can happen in people's lives that um, change someone who was the most ideal client in the world to a disaster. <laughs> but um, in most cases, uh, if you're vetting clients as part of your onboarding process, then um, you can pick and choose what kind of clients you want to work with and the kinds of clients that you would prefer not to work with. The next step is to assess the situation. The way I do this is by literally doing something I call a brain dump. I get all of my thoughts out on the page. And this is really important because this is where you get out all of your emotion because by the time that you realize there's a problem in most cases, if you haven't caught it early, uh, you're angry, uh, you're emotional, um, you're upset, something's, someone's done something uh, or something's just gotten to the point where now you need to deal with it because you haven't dealt with it earlier. And getting out all of your thoughts on a page is really, really important because it it's a healthy way of dealing with your emotions because we have to feel the emotion. Um, and then you write down how you're actually feeling. Obviously, you, this is not what you send to anybody. You don't send it to a client or anything. It just helps you get all of your thoughts out on the page and deal with what it is and see it in front of you. It helps you to see why you're angry because sometimes we all get muddled. We're creative people. So all of the thoughts are here and the same thoughts keep going around and around in our heads and we just keep 
uh, almost having arguments with the client or the builder, whoever it is, in our minds. And this is not a really healthy way to start um, communicating. Uh, so once we get this part out of, the, out of the way, we can move on to the next step. So that is the thing you need to do is to get it all out um, and then leave that aside. <laughs> The next step is to take ownership of the situation. So you're the professional. Uh, yes, there might be other professionals, but uh, they may not be <laughs> acting as professional as they should. And that's not your responsibility. Your responsibility is to be professional yourself. And so in order to move forward, <clears throat> you need to take ownership of the situation. And what does that look like? It means you want to have a look at it from the other person's perspective. You want to own your part in what's happening. So have a look at um, if it's it's typically one specific situation or a conglomeration of a few that kind of have now boiled up into something a little bit bigger. So have a look at the part you played in these situations and then have a look at the situation from somebody else's point of view that's having the problem with what's going on. And that just puts you into a mind frame of understanding it from someone else's perspective, but then also getting to an end point where you can both be happy because you don't want to win. The whole point isn't about you winning. It's about both of you or whoever you're having the argument with or the, the problem. You want the project and your responsibility is to get the project to a point that is successful for your client, which is what you're being paid for, but also for yourself so that you can have a happy project and do the work that you love. So coming to a solution that you think is good for both of you or, or everyone involved in the situation is really the key here. And that is what your intention with this step is. Get the facts. This is really important. <laughs> so we've done the brain dump and now we're literally writing out this, we're researching the situation and finding the exact things that people have said so you can quote them get the dates of emails or uh, telephone conversations, which you should be annotating or you have minutes of meetings anyway. And write down all of the kind of evidence that supports your argument um, so that when somebody else reads it, they can understand uh, the, whole, the whole picture or your point of view where you're coming from. Also... Um, this is really important because as a professional, you've got indemnity insurance and um, your insurer might not pay out if there is a bigger problem and you can't prove or that you've tried to resolve this issue. So this is really, really important. Do it professionally, get all the facts, note them down one by one in a chronological order and make sure it makes sense to to formulate your argument that you're working um, uh, to propose. The next step is to set an intention for the end result. And this is really important to do this now because you don't want to do it kind of before you've done your like brain dump, getting all the emotions out and before you get the facts. This is a good time right now after you've looked at it from another person's perspective to really try and set an intention. What is it that you want the outcome to be? Because as soon as you have an end point, you can work towards that end point. Um, and typically before you've done all these the, the steps beforehand, you might think that there is no solution because um, you're full of emotion and um, you, you haven't uh, been able to see it from someone else's perspective. So just setting that intention for that end result that is good for bo or both or everyone in, involved, typically it's you and the client, but um, uh, set an intention. So what is the outcome? that you want from this situation to be. Now write it out. So literally either take a pen or type out everything you want to say and try and structure it like a formal letter and or a formal email and do it professionally, obviously. Writing, I mean, the first time you write it, you can use all the words that you want to use, but then as you start refining it and going over it, because you'll go over it a million times, um, try and add in the facts, uh, Try and obviously state your end result that you want first and then uh, try and see if you can help your client see things from both perspectives and then try and help and finish um, the, 
the email or the letter uh, helping the client see what result it is that you want. So I'm that kind of person where I don't, I'm, I'm not particularly eloquent. I don't think I am and I don't feel confident um, when all my thoughts are all muddled in my head. So I do want to get everything out on paper. I write it out first. Um, and then even when I'm on a phone call, I will read out parts of my email that I want to say so that I get it, uh, that so that I can clarify it perfectly for my client um, and so that I don't um, muddle it up and get all emotional. So that really helps by doing it first, writing it out, and then I speak to the client on the phone or the builder or the architect, whoever it is um, that I've got the issue with, and then I follow up with my email. And this is a really nice um way to uh, get all your thoughts out but also to make sure that you're um, you're communicating professionally so this uh, the this step is to just write it all out and get it all off your chest and try and see the whole big picture um, before before you send it to your client now in your email or letter mention the outcome that you want this is really important because it plants the seed in the other person's head about what the solution might be to the problem. And this is really great because before this part or before um, reading this, they might think that there is no solution, just like you might have thought that there was no, no solution before you started this process. So make sure you, you uh, clarify really, really clearly what it is that you want the outcome to be. Make the project better. So I know this might sound a little strange, but if you can find a way to turn this situation into a present of some kind, there's always a silver lining. And I know that sounds a little bit um, maybe hopeful, but there are dire, dire situations that I've gotten out of on projects and where I thought it was just going to be uh, the end <laughs> of my life uh, it ended up being the best thing because I created a much stronger relationship with my client um, and then the project ended up not only being a success but even better than I could have ever imagined because that relationship became even stronger because they trusted me more after the situation so if you can find a way to make the project better from the situation that you're in I promise you there is always a silver lining. So try and find it and then make the project better. Now sleep on it. <laughs> so this is really important. Typically this, you might have been, this process could have taken a couple of days or just one day. Um, make sure you don't send it on the same day. Sleep on it. Read it again the next day. Once your emotions are a little bit more in check, maybe ask somebody else to read through it and see if they can see... Uh, the end result that you're aiming for and then um, obviously read through it once more and then make, make your final edits before you click send. The final step is to get it in writing. Even if you're making a phone call uh, or it's been uh, you're discussing this at a meeting, make sure you always follow up with a formal email or letter and this is really really important because you're the professional and you need to remain professional but also back up all of your information that you're sending and all of your communication and as i said earlier you need to check whether um uh, or other people like your insurer or if this does go to court people will look at the communication that you've been sending and if it isn't 100% professional or if you didn't take that extra step and say look I really went out of my way and tried to resolve this issue by doing this this I took all of these steps and then I also uh, followed up to make sure that this was clear so the process of dealing with this can sometimes become a legal process so it's really important to come full circus and finish uh, come full circle and finish it off so um Finishing it off means um, supporting everything you've just done and uh, making uh, completing it with a, a written response so that there is a uh, there is proof of what it is that you've sent and proof of 
how you've tried to deal with the situation. So hopefully you can see how important having a process is and how important it is to follow, uh, follow it, <laughs> um, but also to remain professional at all times because this stuff really happens to the best of us. Um, I wish I could say that I've never had a problem with clients, but I, you know, on every project, something happens that I'm not happy with or the client isn't happy with. And uh, the quicker we resolve it, the better. Um, and the better of the outcome is for both the client and for me or both the builder and for me or the architect and for me and uh, the best for the overall project. If you need a little bit more help, we have an email template for you. So if you follow the link, uh, it, every, every uh, blog post that we write has um, a, a video associated with it, but also um, every video has a blog post. So if you want an email template and with prompts that helps you figure out what to write, you can download that by clicking the link to the blog post and you can um, use that if you want to. And of course, uh, I run a mentorship program for interior designers who run businesses or who want to start a business and get into the interior design field. And uh, if you're interested and need some help, have a look at that.